Hi, and welcome to Discover Oklahoma. I'm Dean O'Lally. Lauren has the day off, but we are very happy to welcome our Lieutenant Governor and Secretary of Tourism, Matt Pinnell. Good to see you. Well, it's great to see you again, Dino, and it is great to be at the First Americans Museum right here in Oklahoma City. Also called the FAM for short, it's located in the heart of Oklahoma City, the very crossroads of America where I-35, 235, I-40, and I-44 all meet. The museum is home to the one place where visitors can experience the collective histories of all 39 First American nations in Oklahoma today. We will take a look around throughout the show. But first, we are heading to Tulsa for a look at another recently opened and absolutely fantastic museum. Yeah, Jason Grubbs takes us to the moving experience that is Greenwood Rising. On the corner of Greenwood and Archer is Greenwood Rising, a new center housing the story of this historic district. From Black Wall Street to the 1921 race massacre and a rebuilding of a community, it's an immersive experience by design and we intentionally designed it so that when people leave, you cannot leave the same way you came. Kimberly Lewis felt a range of emotions. She was impressed and moved. I just was really overwhelmed by all of the uh, pictures and videos here and I really enjoyed it. Visitors start with a film produced locally featuring Greenwood business owners and community leaders. During it, Maya Angelou reads her 1978 poem, Still I Rise. But still, like dust, I'm around. It sets you up visually for what you're about to see. The tour continues after crossing railroad tracks, taking you back to the district's early days. Figures from the past appear in the mirrors of TC's barber shop, telling stories of life back then. They could have spent their money somewhere else. Could, but they did. Beyond the reflections, large sections of walls are waiting, designed to look destroyed as if it were 1921 and you're standing in Greenwood. Old recordings from actual survivors of the race massacre tell their stories. People begging for their homes and businesses not to be burned. The way that they presented it, you could it was like you were right there. You can feel their terror and their sadness. It's hard to explain how you feel. You get a rush of different emotions when you see something like that. And uh, to know that it was actual victims and survivors, it's, uh, like I said, it's a different feeling. Philip Ruff and Aaron Sheckles are visiting from Louisville, Kentucky. Like many, they learned about Greenwood later in life. It's really important. You have to know your history. You know, if you want to improve, uh, you have to know your history. I was like, you know, I'm going to go visit the, the site, and that's why we're here today. After the destruction, you'll see a rebirth of Greenwood, showcased in this room. You see how these people, with that spirit, that Black Wall Street spirit, rebuilt their community and made it actually bigger and economically better. As you move through the center, you'll notice the use of a lot of digital video, audio, and photographs. These here show before and after of what Greenwood looked like then and now. Pictures taken from 1971, 1921, 1919, 1939, and then it transforms right before your eyes and shows you exactly where that exact same picture is and what's here today. Today is where the tour ends. This discussion space is used for talks about what was learned and where the community goes from here. Visitors are welcome to leave a commitment. Once you learn history, what are you gonna do with it? And so we challenge people, hey, now that you know this, what are you gonna do? I think when you come here, you will get a perspective of everything from the beginning to the end and how we're trying to continue to improve our race relations and the community. At Greenwood Rising in downtown Tulsa, I'm Jason Grubbs for Discover Oklahoma. Greenwood Rising is located at 23 North Greenwood. It's open six days a week from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. It's closed on Tuesday. Admission is free for the first year. Timed entry tickets are required. You can find those online at greenwoodrising.org. From Tulsa, we head about an hour and a half northwest for a really unique experience. Yes, we are. We're going to get up close with a herd of Oklahoma bison, and we're going to get a chance to feed them. Come along with me now to the Old West Buffalo Company in Pahuska. I found out that Oklahoma was the, the second most friendly business state in the country. 
And so began Neil and Teresa Fisher's journey to the Sooner State with a business they started in Colorado. COVID shut them down there. They relocated here and now they have developed a first class educational and enormously fun adventure destination. We've raised buffalo since 1999 and there were things that we had no idea about and things in their story that we just, most people don't know, even if they own bison. And so he did all of that and then we were like, okay, we have to make a film. The 12 minute film they made gives a brief but dramatic history of the bison. The reason we did the film is that you wouldn't believe this actually happened even if someone told you. This is a powerful film that tells this amazing story, but it sets the stage for today. And so we're gonna say, we're gonna go look for bison that will probably be more buffalo than we're in one place in the country in 1899. It's just a visual image. So we then the ride begins in search of the herd, and today it didn't take long to find them. They are magnificent creatures, all shapes and sizes, and as they approach, they bring their appetites with them. You can hand feed them. We joke about people getting slimed, and then we come back and wash our hands. It's been very interesting doing this with guests and hearing their comments. Like one said, I didn't know that they all looked a little bit different, and I had no idea they were so cute, because you can't get up close to them safely really anywhere else. The star of the show is their big bull, Woody. He doesn't miss any photo op, and he rolls his big tongue out, and you can throw a treat on it, and he'll roll it back out. Some of them actually kind of eat more like a horse, and you can put it in their mouth, and they'll use their, their lips. But others will roll out a very long tongue, and it's surprising. People have no idea how long their tongues are, and you put a treat on there, and they'll roll it right back in. So just to see kids uh, giggle is one thing, but to see full-grown men giggle and shriek, that's another experience. This entire adventure is a wonderful experience. Now once back, you can head upstairs. The first little section we call the Hall of Shame. And then beyond that is the Hall of Fame. It's then you can learn even more about the people who diminish the number of bison across the country, but you also learn about the folks who helped and saved the bison from extinction, like Theodore Roosevelt. A gift shop has some very cool items, including some of the books Teresa has written, and outside the impressive facade provides several entertaining photo opportunities. Now don't forget, you can also rent this space for any type of special event. Regardless, the Old West Buffalo Company experience will make you want to come back. Getting to see the buffalo and interact with the buffalo is a super cool, unique experience, uh, which is probably the big draw for a lot of people, but I really enjoyed a lot of the educational aspect. It's probably one of the funnest things I've done in quite some time. This is my second time doing it, and I will be back many more times. It's something that you can bring kids to, the whole family will enjoy it. I think it's a really well-rounded way to spend your time if you're here for a day trip. Buffalo Encounters are hosted from early spring into November on Wednesdays through Sundays. The times vary. You'll want to hit up their website for details on times and ticket information. It's oldwestbuffalo.com. Coming up on Discover Oklahoma. You're far enough away to where you, know, you, you can look up and really see all the stars at night. Under the night sky from up in the trees, the getaway you just have to experience. We have river otters, we have bobcats, coyotes, quail. Plus the animals of southwestern Oklahoma and how you can meet them. And then one year, my four kids got together and bought me a beer making kit. And the little family gift that sparked a big business idea. It's all ahead right here on Discover Oklahoma. Imagine limitless possibilities with the Oklahoma Travel Guide. Imagine world-class wonderlands, road trips that inspire. Imagine date night elevated. Order your free guide at travelok.com. Imagine that. Welcome back to Discover Oklahoma, coming to you from the newly opened First American Museum in Oklahoma City, an absolute must-see location. And after spending some time in Oklahoma City, you might be ready for a quick country getaway. Yeah, and the kids are really going to love this one. Deanne Stein takes us to the tree houses in Eufaula. The drive to our getaway is definitely off the beaten path. GPS doesn't do well, so we have to meet our guests and, and have them follow us. So we followed our host, Richard Shelton, to our secluded location. Yeah, it is remote, uh, but it's only about eight miles from town. 
My teenage daughter and I were not disappointed when we finally saw the accommodations up in the trees. The most fun is when, when uh, people come out here with kids and just to see the kids' eyes light up when they come out. The Eufaula Treehouse Tree Sort has two tree houses for rent. We stayed in the Hummingbird, which sleeps four, a queen bed on the main floor, and a full bed in the loft. Well, you know, each tree house, you know, it does have a, a running water full bathroom. Um, you know, and you have a refrigerator and microwave. And heat and air. There is also a nice deck overlooking the property. A lot of people really enjoy just to, to unplug and, and get out here in nature and relax. Unplug we did. Of course, I didn't tell my daughter until we got here. She took it all in stride, though, and experienced wow. some of the fun at hand. You know, a lot of people really like the fact that they can unplug and have their kids unplug and just have good family time. Um, you know, and a lot of people just like to, to be out in nature. The space offers a fire pit and charcoal grill and a picnic table. Richard and his wife Becky also provide outdoor fun like horseshoes and cornhole. To relax, you can hang out in a hammock or the tree swing. And with the Eufaula and the lake nearby, there is plenty to do within minutes of the treehouse. If you like the outdoors, of course, on Eufaula Lake, there's lots of good fishing. Um, you know, and then Eufaula State Park's not that far away, and Eufaula Cove. Uh, so fishing, hiking, golfing, disc golf, you know, it's, it, it's in boating, it, it's all right here close. When darkness fell, we enjoyed s'mores by the fire pit and then a challenging round of Jenga on the patio. You know, being able to stay up in the trees is, people really like that, and also just the, the peacefulness of it, uh, because, you know, you don't have any traffic noise or anything out here. You're far enough away to where, you know, you, you can look up and really see all the stars at night. For larger groups, they offer the Bigfoot Treehouse. It sleeps up to six and has all the amenities as the Hummingbird Treehouse. There's also a walkway up to the top instead of stairs, making it handicap accessible. And a third tree house is in the plans for the future. It's been a blast, we, we really enjoy it. It's, it's a lot of fun just to see, uh, just to see the comments people make and, and, you know, and what they enjoyed about their stay. We definitely enjoyed our stay. It was like glamping in a tree house. So if you haven't done this yet, I highly recommend it. And what's nice is you can rent the tree houses year round. In Eufaula, I'm Deanne Stein for Discover Oklahoma. You can book your trip at the Eufaula Tree Houses on their website, eufaulatreesort.com. We're now headed to southwest Oklahoma and going underwater, so to speak. Lauren Nelson is going to take us to the Medicine Park Aquarium to meet some of its newest residents. In the short four years the Medicine Park Aquarium and Natural Sciences Center has been open, it's grown by leaps and bounds. Let's explore what's new. When this was started and developed, and like I said by Doug Kemper, we have a 20 year plus marketing plan and every year we'll bring one to two to three exhibits on, but we've only been open officially four years and in that four years we've opened 11 exhibits. And so we are growing and uh, adding as we can. We have river otters, we have bobcats, coyotes, quail. We're gonna have uh, more exhibits that come like cougars, black bears, but stuff that is native to us. Most everything you'll see here you can find while you're out exploring Oklahoma, including the North American River Otters. Right now you see the McCaslin uh, Otter Exhibit. It's been open since last year, March of last year. We have two male uh, otters, Dean and Sam. They are native to Oklahoma. They're, they're the North American River Otters. They are native and they are actually in Medicine Creek and they are in the refuge. So we have a, the river system, obviously. Um, you have to have enrichment. Uh, river otters are intelligent, and uh, so you have to have enrichment. So we have a little pool, a little river system, and then we have a huge tank for them to uh, swim in. One of the newest exhibits here features Fido and feline friends in the coyote and bobcat habitat. One of our newer exhibits, uh, the Dollar Donosco family sponsored both of them in uh, memory of her sister. And we have a, a blue-eyed coyote named Mariah, and we have two bobcats. We have one named Luke, he's a baby bobcat, he's just a year old, which you guys will meet. And then we have another one that was donated, his name is Bing, and he's also, uh, uh, will be on display. Uh, Mariah is our coyote, and she's never been around any other coyote, so she is just by herself, but she is very awesome, so you'll get to see her too. 
Closer in relation to their waterbound friends inside the aquarium are the tortoises you'll find in the tortoise territory. We had two African cicadas, which they're not obviously native. They're from Africa. They're the third largest tortoise in the world. We bring out our native turtles and compare these tortoises and turtles and say, what's the difference between a turtle, what's a tortoise? The mission of the Medicine Park Aquarium and Natural Sciences Center is to bring people and science together. Through these new additions, you can experience more of nature and learn about the animals you can find in our own backyard. It was very important to our founding director, uh, Doug Kemper, to have things that are in our backyard so our kids of Southwest Oklahoma can know what is in our ponds, our lakes, our rivers, our streams, and learn about them. So we're not only a full aquarium, we're going to be a full zoo of Southwest Oklahoma, animals of Southwest Oklahoma. The Medicine Park Aquarium is open seven days a week from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Plan your trip and find out about ticket information on their website, mpmns.com. Coming up on Discover Oklahoma. My wife and I are the founders. Four grown kids and their spouses work here. The family business that has a whole town buzzing. It's a 10 is what I feel like, so. That good. That great, yeah, 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 definitely. And a different type of pizza gets the best kind of response where to get it when Discover Oklahoma continues. Start your next journey with the Travel OK Trip Planner. First, choose an itinerary or build your own. Share travel plans with friends and let the adventure begin. The Travel OK Trip Planner. Download the app today. Welcome back to Discover Oklahoma. We're enjoying some time at the world-class new First American Museum in Oklahoma City, home to the collective histories of the 39 tribes here in our great state. From Oklahoma City, we're gonna head southeast to the, to the town of Durant, not Durant, but Durant. All right, thank you for letting me know, but I can tell you this also, there are a lot of people who are very excited about this new place where they can just sort of kick back and relax. Right now, Tina McGarry is gonna take us to the Lost Street Brewing Company. Our name is Lost Street Brewing, but our tagline is Lost Street Brewing where adventure is found. Adventure, friendship, and good taste in beer. Found off the beaten path in downtown Durant. The reason for the name is that we are on Lost Street. It's, a, it's an alley behind Main Street. We're in a 1918 building that we've been able to come in and repurpose into a 10 barrel brew house and tap room. Scott DeWald and his family are the heartbeat of Lost Street Brewing. My wife and I are the founders, four grown kids and their spouses work here. And this family business all started with a simple gift. And then one year, my four kids got together and bought me a beer making kit. It was a $99 beer making kit that converted into what you see now. We started making beer as a family. That first batch we made was really pretty good. We made a couple more, we really liked it. Then we started visiting breweries and we fell in love with the craft beer industry. We fell in love with the notion of being able to make it ourselves and produce a product that everybody would love. And so from that, that was the genesis. That's what started it all was that first five gallons of beer that we made in our basement as a family. And the tasty suds got a whole town buzzing. Customers like Amy Cook come here for the camaraderie and a cold one. Normally I like the stouts, but I like the wheat beer. It's, a, it's an American wheat and it is very mild but delicious. It's really good. They've got several selections. I usually go for the Lost Blonde. And my friends say that's kind of fitting for me. <laughs> the beer is great. The beer is actually really good. Um, they put a lot of uh, research into it, and it's something that really you could, I could actually say that it's great for not just here, but really, I mean, it's just, it's good beer. It's great. There are 16 brews on tap, a wide variety from very light to dark and stout. Truly something for everyone's taste. Cheers. I've been a home brewer for around 25 years. And today, he's living out his dream, one batch at a time, crafting recipes and perfecting the brew. I just never, I never thought it ever happened, so, but now it's happening, kind of, so. How is I'm, it? I love it, so, and uh, it, there's so much to making beer and just, uh, 
I keep trying to learn things every day. I'm making it better. When we sat down as a family to talk about this brewery, we decided we wanted to be more than just a brewery. We wanted to be a place where people could come together collectively to play games, to spend family time. They have different events every night. I mean, they have bingo one night, they have a trivia night, they do yoga in the morning. A great atmosphere, friendly and fun. Customers love the bright, modern industrial look combined with the character of a century-old building. But the biggest draw? The good suds. In Durant, I'm Tina McGarry, Discovering Oklahoma. This Oklahoma family-owned business is open Wednesday through Sunday at 109 West Law Street in Durant. And if craft beer interests you, you'll want to download the Oklahoma Craft Beer Trail brochure. We'll also send you a paper copy if you like. Just go to TravelOK.com and click up top where it says brochures. Up next on Discover Oklahoma. The wings actually are where it's at. It's really, really good, nice smoked wing. But yeah, I really enjoy it. High praise for a new hot spot where you just have to stop and eat. Up next, right here on Discover Oklahoma. Why order a free Oklahoma outdoor guide? Uncover unique wonders. Cultivate your curiosity. And wake up your wild side. Order or download your free copy today. Well, we've really enjoyed our first look at the First Americans Museum right here in Oklahoma City. Dino, th this is a bucket list type of spot right here. I couldn't agree with you more. This is a magnificent location. But we are at the end of the show, and you know what that means? We do have to talk a little bit about food. And coincidentally, there's a place about three blocks from here, and it's called Rendezvous Pizza. And right now, Quinn Tran is going to show us around. Rendezvous Pizza likes to do things differently from the open seating to the two styles of pizzas. Thin crust, uh, it's not like thin extra thin crust, but it's New York style to where you're able to fold the pizza instead of eating it with a fork. The Detroit style, what it is, it's a, a deep dish type style pizza with uh, cheese on the side with to give it that, that strong crust on the, on, you know, on the ends. We have our, our cheese and then we'll put our toppings and then we'll put uh, uh, the sauce on top. Besides picking the styles of pizza, Detroit or New York, customers have special variations of toppings or build your own. There are also slices of the day. You can get uh, two slices and a beer for under $12. So that's uh, kind of what makes us unique as well. Another plus, the eatery uses fresh, local ingredients. We have Shawnee Mills, uh, we use their ingredients. So that's kind of a local thing. So we're very proud about that. And uh, on the Detroit style, it's that just good, thick, crunchy crust. So, oh, it's a 10. It's a 10 is what I feel like, so. That good. That good, that great, yeah, 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 definitely. Rendezvous Pizza opened in May 2021, one of the newest eateries located in the heart of Bricktown. It's becoming a fun hangout for the pizza, the beer, the budget, and more. The wings actually are where it's at. It's a really, really good, nice smoked wing. But yeah, I really enjoy it. Applewood smoked uh, wings on in, the bone in, and uh, also uh, our uh, Claudia stuffed garlic bread with prosciutto or without prosciutto is to die for. So it's really, really good. So to die for. Yeah, to die for. It's fantastic. It? It's just the uh, first off the bread that we have with it, and then the the the, the cheese that we use. It's just. It's stringy, it does everything that you can ask for on a garlic bread. Do yourself a favor and come, please. It's that good? It is, <laughs> very good, very good. So good that new customers say they'll be back soon for more. This is my first time in, but I'm just really enjoying, you know, it's a really cool spot, really comfortable seating, and it's not the kind of place that you feel like you have to eat and get out, you know, it's uh, the kind of place where you feel like you're welcome to hang out, enjoy your meal. and It's a place where customers get to pick where they sit, make themselves right at home for a rendezvous pizza. In Bricktown, Quintran, Discover Oklahoma. Rendezvous Pizza is open daily at 11 a.m. You'll find them in the Bricktown area of Oklahoma City at 27 East Sheridan. And no matter where your next road trip takes you, the Discover Oklahoma Dining Guide will help you find a great place to eat. Just log on to our website, TravelOK.com, and click Request Free Brochures to get your copy. 
And a huge thank you to you, Lieutenant Governor Matt Pinnell, for joining us this week. Oh, I loved it. And I've got to give a huge shout out to the great staff right here at the First Americans Museum. They do an amazing job. And this right here is just, just a world-class spot. This museum is truly a work of art, sharing the cultural diversity, history, and contributions of the very first Americans. You'll find them at 659 First Americans Boulevard in Oklahoma City, right near the Oklahoma River where I-35 and I-40 intersect. Check out their website to plan your visit at famok.org. And coming up next week on Discover Oklahoma, we'll take a trip back in time to the Honey Springs Battlefield in Northeast Oklahoma. And Mexican food that will make your mouth water. See what they're serving up in Southwest Oklahoma next week, right here on Discover Oklahoma. So until next time, remember, there's always something to discover in Oklahoma.